looking at creating a room in 3ds max um, we're going to do this in a fairly simple way which will hopefully make it easy to understand first thing that i tend to do when i'm working is i change from the default four port layout to a two column three window layout you can select that from going into the standard viewport layout selecting the second one now when you do that it will come up like looking like this you'll have a top view a front view and a left view all of which will be set to wireframes so some basic setting up top and the front view stay as they are now just for the purposes of space on my screen and the fact that i do most of my viewing in the perspective view um, i tend to move those over so i've got a bigger window to work with perspective view click on the word left at the top of the viewpoint port and go to perspective turn the wireframe off set default shading so that will give us a nice shaded material so we can roughly see what we're doing and see what our surfaces look like if it's not selected I like to put on display selected with edged faces so I can see where my polygons are falling on what I'm working with without having a lot of other polygons showing as it would if I simply went onto this and turned on edged faces over on our little navigation button if we ever lose our work this is really good as well but for the basic setup and what we are used to seeing on our perspective grid, we just click on the little home icon that's hiding around up here. So that's the workspace setup. What I'm also going to set up is I'm going to set my render up. Um, now I've got this set to the art render. NVIDIA Mental Ray render also works just as well. I'm going to leave this set on the art renderer. Um, because I've been having some trouble recently with the mental ray, especially if I've been using a Mr. Sun, Mr. Sky physical map. Not that I'm going to be using those in this tutorial, but I have found that I've been getting better results using the art renderer recently than I have been using the mental ray. Closing that, so I now should have all of my materials available and all my materials set up. So let's get on to making the room. Starting off in the standard primitives, we're going to want to choose a plane from the standard primitives menu. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to take this plane and I'm just going to drag it over there. I'm not going to worry about length and width or anything like that. I'm just going to make a plane. We can worry about dimensions in a later tutorial. So I've got my plane. We can see the top of my plane from the top down view. And we can sort of see my plane on the uh, front view. but. Obviously, because the plane is flat, we don't see much of it from the front. And what I'm going to do now for the next section is I'm actually going to work in my top view and just monitor in my perspective view. I'm just going to change these diameters slightly, uh, dimensions slightly. So we've now got a base. What I'm going to add now is I'm going to add some walls. So the walls are in the a AEC extended menu. I'm just going to pick the wall up there. Um, I could change the height, but again, for this level of tutorial, um, I'm just going to work with what's already there. And I'm not going to worry too much about anything else. To start off with, I'm going to line myself up with the edge of my plane. So this is going to put my wall so that it's sat on my floor without any gaps. Click to do your first point and let go and then move the mouse across and from this point I'm going to make sure that my wall goes in a straight line across the top and that my cursor lines up with the vertical in this case or the horizontal that's on the 90 degree angle click to set that point then when you move down it will start drawing another wall don't worry about the weird looking corner that appears just concentrate on getting your wall so it's nice and straight and is lined up with the edge of your plane. That corner fills itself in. So I'm going to come back across here. I'm going to get everything lined up. I'm just going to click to place that. And then I'm going to come back up to the top here. Get my wall nice and straight. It's there somewhere. 
lined up and then when I click because I've got everything lined up appropriately and where I need it to it's asking if I want to have a weld point so I'm going to click yes to the weld point and because I'm only setting this up with one wall um, I'm actually not going to worry too much about having any other rooms coming off so I can right click to get rid of the wall drawing option so I've now got walls that go all the way around my room. If I just turn this one, we can see that there are now no gaps and everything is joined up quite nicely. From there, I want to be able to put in a door so we can get in and out of the room and some windows. So let's start off with the door. There's a number of types of doors you can do. Pivot doors are the most common. They're the ones with the hinges that swing, swing open. Bifold doors are the doors where they fold, they open from the middle and fold back on themselves. And a sliding door does what it says on the tin, it slides sideways. So let's start off with a pivot door. Now it always starts with the width. So the width of the door is how far down the wall the door is going to go. It then does a depth, so how far into the wall, so it needs to be big enough to cover the full depth of that wall. And then finally it does the height, so how tall the door actually is. So I'm still working in my top view at the moment, and I'm going to start off, I'm going to click and drag to draw my door. Now I'll explain in a minute why there is a door actually coming off my door. But what I want to do is I actually want to get this so that it is level. Then when I let go, it will then let me do the depth of the door. Click and let go, and the third one does the height. Now, if you've got your front view set up so you can see the top of your walls, you might want to use the front view for this. I actually haven't, so I'm just going to use the perspective view to see where I get to so I don't get off the front. And that is a door created. Now, at the moment, that door isn't linked to anything. So the wall is still solid, even though that door is open and is still sat in the wall. Now, the reason why it drew the open door is because I've got a degree set on the open. Usually by default, it will be set to zero. Um, in order to make sure you're putting your door the right way, it may be worth initially opening it so that when you build your door, the actual door itself is open and you can see where it is so that you don't end up with a door along a short side. Um, and just for demo per demonstration purposes, I'm actually going to leave that door open for a moment. So let's move this down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to link this door to this wall. So I've got a link tool up here. I'm going to come to my door and I'm going to watch for my cursor changing into those two boxes. Once my cursor has changed, I'm just going to click and drag over to that wall and that will put the door in the wall. And what I've got now is a gap through which I can see. And if I open my doors a bit, door a bit more, you can see there, you can see right through into the actual room. A couple of other options on the doors. If you want to change the diameter, you can change the width. On there if your door's too wide so this door's kind of sticking through my wall a bit I might want to change that down just so that it fits um, it's created a door frame so you can change the parameters for that but also usually ones that I find slightly more interesting to play with you have the option of a double door or a single door so a double door is hinged on both sides and is quite short or you've got your single door, which is the one that most people would think of. You can change the direction that it swings in. So it's swinging into the room now instead of out of it. And you can change what side the door hinges on. So which way the door opens when it's going into or out of the room. So I'm just going to leave my door set up like that for now. Windows have very similar options. Like doors, they have their own little area, and I'm not going to go through all the different types. 
all of the windows open apart from the fixed window. The fixed window is just a pane of glass. But the setup for them is exactly the same as it is for the door. So if I was to go for a sliding window, it starts off with the width, so how far down the wall it goes. So I'm just going to grab this here and I'm going to bring it down and keep it nice and straight. Probably could have done with starting this somewhere slightly different. Then I'm going to set the depth. So because I need to move into the wall a little bit, um, I'm just going to come slightly too far out. And then you get the height of the window. Again, using the front view to gauge or the perspective view to gauge. Now, because I started within this and it was yellow, it's already connected my window to my wall. So I don't actually need to create the link. What I do need to do, however, is just line it up a little bit better in with the wall there. So we can now see where I didn't quite get my window lined up very well in terms of the rotation. And we'll just move that up. And actually, just by moving it up, that seems to have sorted that issue out. So I've now got a window, a door, a floor, and some walls. So let's put some textures on these. That's all I need to really do working in the top and front views. So I can take these back over, put that back to about halfway, so I can see my depth and how far into the room I'm going without it being an issue. So I'm using the compact material editor. And what I'm going to do quickly is just reset my editor slots from stuff that I've been using before. Just give it a second to think about that. So basic material editor. Um, now this is set to standard by default. If you're doing plain colors or you're doing a simple texture, bitmap texture onto a wall, leaving it on standard is fine. If you want something a little bit more dynamic where you have a little bit more control, then you might want to change from standard to either physical or arch and design. Um, I'm going to use the arch and design for this. just because I actually find the layout of the arch and design much nicer to use than I find the standard. I'm not going to use a template for this, because all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick a color for my walls. And let's have some nice neutral colored walls. If I can find such a color. There we go. This is just a nice neutral colored wall. At the moment, if I put my wall in, if I was to render this wall, um, what I would actually get is a very shiny wall that would reflect the stuff around it. So what I do need to do is I do need to turn my glossiness down so it is very much less shiny. And what I could also do is turn my reflectivity down. I'm not going to turn it all the way down. We're going to stop at about, I'd like to stop at about 0.1. I think my laptop has other ideas. There we go. But it just means that we're not going to get a reflection of the room in the walls. Um, because unless for some reason we have very well polished walls, we tend not to have that effect in the real world. Obviously, if you're creating something for an alien world, those rules may not apply and you might want to have very shiny reflective walls. For the carpet, I'm just going to use a color again. In fact, I'm going to go back and put a wallpaper onto these walls. But I'm just going to do a nice light coloured carpet. So we'll go for a nice cream colour. We'll put that onto the floor. Now I'm just going to leave my floor cream, as if it's got a cream carpet down. And I'm actually going to put a map onto my walls. So the thing that looks like a little tick box next to where the colour is actually takes you to your maps and materials. So because I'm putting a, a wallpaper in, I'm just going to go to my bitmaps and grab my wallpaper there. Now, you won't necessarily see an update. It does depend a little bit on whether on the top layer, showing the shade material in viewport is ticked or not. By default, it tends to not be ticked. 
but you can set it to show. The reason it tends to not be picked uh, to be ticked automatically is because of the memory usage that we can get when we start getting really complicated models. So that sets up the floor and the walls. Now we need to texture our windows and our door. Windows and doors are made up of five different parts. So we can't use one material on them. We need to be able to set up a number of materials within one section. So this time, instead of using our standard arch and design or physical, we're going to use a multi sub object. Now you could discard the old material. You could keep the old material. It doesn't really make a difference because when we go in, we're going to edit it anyway. If you've already got a material set up, and you just don't like how it looks and you want to change it so that you know you have, don't have an entire window that you can see through including the frames for example you might want to keep the old material as a sub material or you can go ahead and delete it i'm just going to keep it so now what i've got here is i've got my first material for this one i am actually going to use a physical material because when I come into physical material, there's a preset already in here for glossy plastic. And if I'm going for UPVC windows, glossy plastic seems like a fairly safe bet. I do, however, want to make it white so that it is a nice, white, shiny UPVC window. And that's all the settings I'm going to change on that. The rest of that can stay exactly as it is. And I could go in and set that up for the other materials that relate to the window frame. But I'm not actually going to do that. I'm going to do it cheap way. Now, there are five materials that apply to a window. To make life a bit easier, I'm going to get rid of 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 just by clicking on one and then pressing delete until they've disappeared. When it comes to windows and doors, one and two give you one part of the, give you parts of the frame. Four and five give you parts of the frame. Material three gives you your main pane. So for the windows, it gives you the glass. For a door, it gives you this main center section in here. Now, because I'm making a UPVC window. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this down and I'm going to make an instance so that if I need to change anything for the material for my windows, by doing it as an instance, it will update automatically. So just drag and drop those on there and we'll click OK. That leaves number three, which is our glass plane. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to pick physical material again. Because in physical material, we have a glass with thin geometry. Perfect for window panes. So that is now already set up to go as a window pane. When I drag and drop that on there, all of our materials are now in place for a nice white UPVC window. Now, if it was a door like a patio door that I was setting up, I could just drag and drop that straight onto there as well. And that would then match. If I didn't want to do that and I wanted to set it up as a wooden door, so, or maybe a wooden door with a glass plane, I would need to do another multi sub object. I could drag straight across and then just rename this material here to default four. And all I need to do now is go into my physical material slot and I'm going to use some wood from the Autodesk settings. And I think for this one, we will have some nice, let's have some English oak. So that is now when it's finished thinking about it, a nice English oak pattern. And if I go up, what I should get all of those changing. Apparently it doesn't want to, so I'm just going to drag and do a copy of these across. Now, they should have, as instances, 
automatically updated when I change the first one. It seems to have not bothered, so I'm just going to drag and drop and replace them. So now I've got some nice wood with a glass door, glass plane in it. I'm just going to drag and drop that onto my door. So now if I move my room around and we go to here, when I click the render button, and we'll just ignore the old render, press continue if you get that message coming up. And my picture is probably going to look quite grainy because it's not it's set to a draft quality. But I do now have my door and my window which are see-through. What I could also do if I'm not happy with that is change from the art renderer to the mental ray. And we'll just give that a quick run through and see what difference that makes. So our glass is now a lot more reflective and we have a wood pattern on our door frame. So again, it depends on the situation as to which renderer I'll, I would use. Probably going to stick with this one for now. Let's close that down. I'll stick with the mental ray for the moment and we'll see how it goes. Okay, let's give ourselves a ceiling. Now, because ceilings are usually flat, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shift click and drag my plane up so it goes up and meets the top of my room, top of my walls. Let go. And this time I want it to do a copy. So I'm going to click OK and I now have a copy of my floor that I can set to a roof colour. So if I come into this one and I'm just going to have a nice plain white roof. So using the diffuse, set that up so it's nice and white. Specular is zero because there's no glossiness to it. It's just a nice plain white roof. Oh, nice plain white ceiling. Now, if I was doing the outside of a house, I might want to put a roof on this as well. So, just quickly, going to add a roof. I know it doesn't look like the outside of a house because it's all got wallpaper on it. But I'll just show you how the best way to do this. So, I'm going to create another copy. Now, what I should be doing is naming this. So, I should be naming this one roof while I make it. And this one should be ceiling. And plane one, I should name the floor. But I'm just going to leave that as plane one. So to do the roof, from the modifier list, we're going to get the edit poly. And we're going to select the edges. Now, because this is such a light color, it's actually quite hard to see the lines. But I'm going for this middle line that runs all the way down here. Um, so I've used the shift key, moved one beside it, clicked it, and that selected the line all the way across. I'm going to use the soft selection rollout for this. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the fall off and turn it up so I have dark blue on my edges. I'm then going to take some of this pinch out, uh, put some pinch in, sorry, just to give it a nice straight edge. Might be worth just changing some of the bubble as well, just so we get something that is a nice roof shape. From there, I can work on my z-axis, and I can just pull this up, and it will fold out into a roof. It might take a little bit of time playing with the settings to get it right. So I might do actually is just try maybe putting that more to there. And if we take a little bit of the pinch out, that's possibly slightly more roof shaped. So now I've got something that is a little bit more roof shaped. Okay, it's flying, but we can fix flying later get rid of that for a moment. Just to 
solidify the roof. If we grab the bridge tool, still on our edit poly on our edges. And what we're going to do, we're going to click on an outside edge, come across and click on the one directly opposite it. That gives us a nice surface. And we're going to do the same on that top one. Turn it round, select the roof, edge, and go to the opposite edge, same on both sides. So we now have a full roof on there. And all we'd need to do from that point is edit the whole object, move it down just so that it's actually sitting on the top of our roof. And what we could do if we wanted to is we could do a scale on the X and the Y axes just to bring it out a bit. And we can take that and just drop it down slightly so we've got a little bit of coverage on our roof. If we did that, we might want to bridge across the edges underneath, so we've got a surface there. Um, purely so that we don't just have air blowing under and lifting our roof off more than anything else. So we've now got a room with a roof and a nice white ceiling. So if I press the render button, we can't see much of anything here. We need to do something with the ceiling. But we are mostly where we want to be. So what we're going to do for the ceiling is we're just going to those need to be renamed. I've used I've turned the ceiling layer into the roof. Never mind. What I'm going to do for this is from the modifier list, I'm just going to pick up normal and we'll just see if that now renders correctly. So all I've done is I flipped the side that we can see to give us the colour in the roof. What I could also do is on the roof, if I didn't want to if I didn't want to flip the normals using this modifier, I can take that out and in the material editor on my nice white paint here, what I can do is use a double sided material, keep the old materials as sub material because I've already got that the right colour and this works a little bit the same as the multi sub objects apart from it only has the two and it works on a flat surface. So now, without having the normals flipped, if I render this, we can see my roof is still in place. So hopefully that helps with setting up windows, doors, and setting up the basics of a room ready for furniture to be put in. Also put in a roof on top of a house.